tutorial, I'm going to show you how to create this cool cloud render here. I created this for fun and posted it on Reddit a couple weeks ago and I got a lot of good feedback. So thank you guys very much and a lot of questions on how to do this. So I thought I'd throw together a tutorial real quick to just show you how to create it yourself. First, we want to create our ocean. So we need to create a plane. We're going to go down to plane. And we're going to go ahead and go to the object settings and just increase this to 10,000 by 10,000. Then 1,000 for the segments in both the width and the height. It's a little overkill, but it's okay. We need a lot of segments because we're going to do some displacement displacement what we need to do is with our plane selected go down to our bin modifier click and hold go down to our displacer hold shift and then let go and that's going to go ahead and put that displacer as a child of our plane which is where we want our modifier to be we're going to go into the shading tab we're going to twirl down the shader option and go to noise click inside of our noise and you can see how that's kind of creating our ocean here but it's way too bumpy what we need to do is we can leave this noise type at noise but we want to change the global scale up to 1000 that's just going to smooth that out a little bit for us. And you can kind of see how that's going to look like some nice subtle calm waves. Last thing we need to do is go to a loop period one and animation speed of one. And this way when we hit play, what it'll do is that this will loop throughout our scene. So we'll just have this nice looping animation, which doesn't really matter. But if, because we're going to be moving the camera and it's not going to loop, but if you wanted to, you could do a stationary camera and this would loop for you. Okay. So now we have that, let's go back to our displacer here and go to the objects tab for that. And we're just going to lower the strength down to five. Now it's going to look like we've pretty much killed it off, but there's still going to be that subtle movement here when we get our camera down low. It's just going to add a little bit of extra realism and calmness to our water here. We don't want it to be just like a super flat plane. So it still has a little bit of motion, but it's not a lot. Now we have our ocean created. Let's go ahead and create our clouds. And go to Redshift Objects, Redshift Volume. Instead of here, I have a link to the VDB we're going to download down below. I've used it before in my other Cloud Neon video. It's free to download off Gumroad. Feel free to donate to this artist. I'm not affiliated to them in any way. I believe they also have a pack of uh, 60 or so clouds with some variation. If you want to download those, feel free. Uh, once we have this downloaded, extract that file and we're going to go here and click these three dots. Extract that out inside of the flat folder, go to the HD folder. We want the high definition version. We're going to go ahead and grab this high altitude, big cloud flat 14 file and open that up. That's just going to put that in there. And as you can see, that's just created this box here in the distance. And what we need to do is we just need to change our preview mode to points. We're going to up the points to 20 and lower our threshold down to 0.001. And that's just going to kind of give us this kind of really basic generic view of what our cloud is going to look like. And the reason we did such few dots is because we're going to have a whole lot of these clouds. So we just don't want to slow down our render too much. So speaking of creating a whole bunch of these clouds, we want to add this into a cloner. So with our red volume selected, selected, we're going to hold alt and click this cloner object here. And that's going to put that inside of our cloner for us. You see, it's created a bunch of clouds here. In the settings for these clouds, we want to go ahead and go to our count and change this to 12 in the X and 12 in the Z. So we have a lot more clouds here. And then for the size, we're going to go 180 in the X and 180 in the Z just for that to spread out, just to spread out these clouds a little bit less than what it was. Now we have this big blanket of clouds. We want to hit R and or hold shift and rotate this in the Z 180 degrees, basically because these clouds have a flat bottom and I didn't want this to have to be flat bottom clouds. So I flip it over. Now we've done that. Let's go ahead and go to MoGraph Effector and then Random. And what this is going to do when we have our cloner selected and we add that MoGraph Random Effector, you can see if you go to the Effectors tab of our cloner, it's put that in there. So if you don't have this selected, it may not add that in there. So if you notice you added a random effector or any type of effector to something like a cloner and it didn't show up, just go to that Effectors tab and throw that in there. But our random effector, we just want this to add some variation to our clouds and our VDBs. One note with a VDB real quick is if I try to just scale this with T, it's not going to work. And I was talking to EJ from iDesign about this and he says, all you need to do is go to the object tab and then the object scale and now you can scale it up and down. So a little tip from him, little side note. Okay, so in our random effector here for our clouds, add some variation to how these clouds are dispersed amongst our grid. So we want to go ahead and the X and do 300. The Y, we want to do 150. And then for the Z, we're going to do 300 as well. 
you can see how that's just kind of spread our clouds out and made some different variation to this. Rotation, we want to just affect the H here so it rotates this way because if we rotate our clouds this way, that's just not going to look right to have these weird tall skinny clouds. That's not really a, a thing you see. So we just want to do 360 degrees in the H and then for the scale, we want to do a uniform scale and set that to 1. And that's just going to give us some variation in the size of these objects here. But one last thing we want to do is go into our fields tab and just add another random field onto this. So basically all this is going to do is say to randomly apply our random effector to our corner. It just, I found this just gave me good results. Now we're ready to move our cloud that's up a little bit. So let's grab our cloner and just lift it up about 250 in the Y. Okay, and we'll move this here in a little bit. Let's go to our top view and let's just kind of pull this towards the edge here, somewhere around 2800. I think I moved it over a little bit in the Z, about 26. So we're just kind of, kind of here near the edge, kind of where our camera has been set up here. Now let's go ahead and add our camera. So we'll go to Redshift, Camera, Standard Camera. Go ahead and click this box so we're inside of our camera. And we really want this to be around 4,500, around 40 in the Y, and then zero for the Z here. And we want to make sure this is set to 90 degrees, set out, but tilt this up a little bit. So we're going to set it to negative three in the P here. So we can see a little more clouds. But really, we just want our horizon just a little bit above the center of our scene here. Okay, so now we have that. Let's go ahead and create our dome light, which is going to give us this nice sunshine for us. Go to lights, dome light. And if you go ahead and hit render, open up our render view here, we can hit preview, turn off bucket rendering. We can see we have nothing really going on. It's just this blank floor and this blank background. So with our dome light, what we need to do is add a texture. And this texture is from HDRI Haven. Sorry, it's now called Poly Haven. I use the Drakenstein Quarry 4K. There'll be a link to that below in the description as well. We're gonna bring that in. And that's just this really nice clouds here. But what we want to do is we want to rotate this around. Scale this down so we can see. So we'll select it. We just want to rotate this around negative 140 degrees. And you can see that's just going to put this sun right here, right in the center of our scene, which is where we want it. And then we kind of have these trees and stuff, this hill. We really don't want this. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to hit W to go to the world axis here. I'm just going to click and drag this up just a little bit, like negative 0.26. And so that's just kind of hidden all that stuff behind our horizon here. So we have our cloud here. We can scoot this over just a bit more to put it more in the center of our scene. See, we don't have any clouds in our scene from our VDVs. And that's because we don't have any materials on them. And that's how you get them to render. So let's go ahead and do our ocean first real quick. We're going to go to create redshift material material. Let's double click that. We're going to go ahead and choose pure black. Then we're going to add a max on noise and a bump map. And we're going to use this max on noise to create sort of a bump wave texture. We're going to change it to piezo and up the scale to 10. Connect that into our bump map. Go to texture input. And inside this bump map, we want to change the scale down to 0.2 for the height scale because we don't really want it to be super noticeable. We just want it to be kind of subtle. And then plug that into our redshift material overall bump input. That is all we need to do for that. And we can throw that on our plane, hit render, and we can see already that it's kind of going to create this really nice, pretty ocean for us. So already that looks just kind of really pretty. So now we still have no clouds. So let's go ahead and go to create redshift material volume. We'll go ahead and throw that on our volume material. Nothing's going to happen because we haven't set up any channels for that or anything. So what I want to do is open up that volume and see here underneath the scatter, we have a channel. And this is where we need to twirl this down, go down to redshift volume, select density. This comes with that VDV we downloaded. So now that we've done that, this is going to process that. And you'll see now we have these dark storm clouds in here. So what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna turn this off just to speed this up for a little bit. We're going to increase our scatter coefficient to 1.5. And that's gonna allow more light to bounce around inside of our clouds. The second thing I'm going to do is I'm going to double click this last knot and I'm going to change it to 31 in the H, 21 in the S to kind of give it this golden hour type of light. And then I'm going to slide this knot down towards this side of our ramp. What that's going to do is that's going to just 
create a little bit more of that golden light. It's gonna kind of give our clouds this golden sunsetty look, and it's gonna allow that light to scatter around more than it be this dark color. It's just kind of cheating in some extra brightness to it. See how that lightened that up a little bit. Last thing we wanna do is to make these even more kind of see-through and less dark storm clouds is we want to lower our absorption coefficient. We're gonna lower that down to 0.6 and we're gonna double click this knot. And we're gonna choose like a light blue and we're just gonna go up to about 4% in the, in the S here, the saturation. And what that's gonna do is now when we hit render on this, you can see we have kind of this nice golden light and then where that lights and more of that light is going to pass through our clouds because our absorption coefficient is less and where it's brighter it's going to have where it's darker it's going to have kind of a bluish hue to it rather than just this pure black view blue so it's kind of gives us these nice little fluffy clouds and they don't look great right now but they will here in just a minute but that is all we need to do for that want to go ahead and animate our camera here. Now you could just leave it here and hit play and you'll have a loop, but let's go ahead and add it to 240 frames. We're gonna keyframe our camera right here. Go to the last frame, go to our top view, click E to move it, hold shift, and just move it forward about 260 to 60 or so, somewhere around there, 250 is fine. Keyframe that. Go to window, F curve. We just want to make sure that this is a linear move for this camera. So now we just have this really slow creep across our ocean. Which is just going to look nice. You could speed it up, do whatever you want. Uh, whatever vibe you, you're going for. If you notice this isn't playing back at real speed because of all these dots and stuff, one trick you can do is click this icon here, change it from all frames to just 24 frames, which is what we have our project set to. So now it'll play back in real speed, but it'll skip over frames, but you can actually see the actual speed of your camera move. So this is very helpful. So it's not quite as slow as it was looking. Cool, so now we have that. All we need to do is go to open up our render view here. And now we need to spice this up with the secret sauce, which is in the post effect settings. And so here, we want to go to the color controls, just add in a little S, little S curve here. That's all we need to do for that. Photographic exposure, super important. We want to set the shutter to 180 and the F stop to 9.8. I always like to set the shutter type to 180 because that's kind of what you do for film. And um, raising up your f-stop is going to kind of close down your iris a little bit to darken up our scene. And you can kind of see how already it's getting more of a sunset vibe to this. Now this is where everything just happens. We go to bloom, enable that. We go to the bloom threshold, lower that down to 0.65. And lower the intensity down to 0.75. And we might have raised our... S curve just a little too high here. So you can see our sun is a little off center here. So what we wanna do is just rotate that. We'll do 143. In our render settings, we want redshift to be set to the preset of low. We want denoising on, set to optics. In the advanced tab, we wanna make sure our overhead bucket is set to zero so we get that going faster. And then lastly, we wanna make sure our ray tracing is on if we have that option. Now, if you're going to do an animation or anything, it's always a good option when using Denoiser to go into the Advanced tab and uncheck Random Noise Pattern. This is going to allow your animations to kind of have a cleaner noise. Sometimes when you're using Denoiser and you have Random Noise Pattern on, which it's on by default, uh, you'll see that it has to kind of change the blur and you'll get these weird kind of smudges kind of going from frame to frame. So if you keep the noise pattern not random, it's going to be able to blend those together more seamlessly for you. Now, when you're rendering and you realize with however you have your scene set up, you may have more noise than you want. All you need to do is lower this threshold value down. Obviously, the lower it goes, the longer the render time gets up, but it also gets cleaner. So just we can start at a default of low right now, but just know that that's how you can clean this up. Now we go to output. We want to make sure we have all frames selected and then we save this out as a PNG wherever we want this to be. And before we set this off to render, let's go ahead and just render out one frame. Bucket rendering here. So lastly, what I'll do is I'll go to render, go to add to render queue. 
and we'll go down here and make sure we have that here. I like to use the render queue because it kind of makes starting and stopping renders a lot easier than if you're trying to manually do it from your project. Also, you don't have to open your project up for this. You can just go ahead and play or stop. And then when you open up some 4D, you can just open up the render queue, hit play to resume it. And so just kind of let this run overnight and we should be good to go. Okay, but now we have this really nice relaxing scene here that I created. Thank you guys for the positive feedback on Reddit and just all my content. Thank you guys so much. And be sure to check out my latest Skillshare course on creating greebles and really using Redshift displacement as well on top of that. It's available now on Skillshare. And also if you want to learn how to create some VDB clouds, uh, be sure to check that out in my Redshift Materials Masterclass. We do that. See you guys next time.